Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today's monitor review comes courtesy of you guys, the commenters, the Patreon members, and just general viewers of the channel. You guys have been telling me to review a Kogan monitor for ages, and thanks to Kogan, I've been able to make that happen. And yes, before you ask, I do have a bit of a cold at the moment. I've been sort of working through that over the past week. That hasn't stopped me from testing out more displays, uh, which is why I'm still able to get this review out. So the monitor in question is the Kogan KAMN 341 FQULA, which is sensibly advertised as just the Kogan 34 WQHD curved 219 ultra wide 100 hertz free sync monitor 3440 by 1440 on their website. Uh, I'm probably not going to say that absolute mouthful of a product name in the future, uh, but from the website name you've probably been able to figure out all the key specifications. For our international viewers, you might be wondering, what is Kogan? I've never heard of this brand before. And well, that's because it's an Australian exclusive brand. But before you click away, you might have spotted something very familiar about this 34 inch monitor design. It looks quite similar to some of the Viotech monitors I've been testing out on the channel over the past year. In fact, I suspect both Viotech and Kogan are using the same ODM for this product. An ODM, or Original Design Manufacturer, is a company that develops products it then sells to other companies that put their brand on it. I'm not sure which ODM is responsible for this monitor, but the Kogan 34-inch monitor I'm reviewing today looks almost identical to the Viotech GN34C that North Americans can buy off Amazon. The stand is slightly different, but the rear design is a dead giveaway, and the on-screen display used with this Kogan monitor is identical to some of the Viotech monitors I've tested. The specifications, such as the 34-inch 1440p ultra-wide VA panel at 100Hz, are also identical. So while this review will be based on my experience with the Kogan model, I suspect most of what I will be talking about here will also apply to the Viotech GN34C. And that's great news really, because both options are very affordable in their respective territories. The GN34C is available for just 450 US dollars, which is an absolute steal for these specifications in 2019, undercutting many competitors by several hundred dollars. Similarly, the Kogan 34-inch ultra-wide is a steal for Australians, costing just $540, which again is several hundred dollars less than the next cheapest equivalent option. So what does $540 get you? Well, I've got to say I wasn't super impressed with the build quality of this monitor. I've actually quite liked the design of past Viotech displays, but this one just feels a bit cheaper and less well constructed. On the rear there are some quite obvious and messy seams where plastic panels join together and I'm not a fan of the glossy plastic strip that runs around the edges. On top of this, the stand is not very stable. There's a lot of play in the connection point, which isn't great for such a wide monitor. There's also no height adjustability, which is an issue when the monitor sits so low to your desk. I suspect many buyers will be looking to get a visa mount for this monitor, given that, at least for me, it sits uncomfortably low at a desk, and the wide pronged stand is hard to raise using simple cheats, like stacking books, for example. The problems with the design don't end there. While the rear panel is nice, clean, and free of game elements, the ports are split into two separate areas, each with its own cover. One is for the power plug, and the other is for the DisplayPort HDMI and DVI connectors. This makes it hard to achieve neat cable management because the cables are coming from two separate areas, each quite far apart, and with no obvious routing point through the stand. This is probably sounding like a bit of a nitpick, but it's just one of those things that most other monitors seem to get right. The on-screen menu is controlled through face buttons rather than a directional toggle, so flicking through all the options is difficult. I wouldn't say there's a lot of features in there, but you do get several modes, multi-window options, cheat crosshairs, and color controls. All of these would be easier to navigate with directional controls. Also worth mentioning is that FreeSync is disabled by default. You'll want to turn that on to get adaptive sync with low frame rate compensation. Luckily, as we move into the performance section of this review, there are many more positive things to talk about. Response times are one. The Kogan 34-inch ultrawide uses a VA panel, and we know that VA is the slowest of the three main LCD technologies. However, this particular panel, set to its fastest overdrive setting, which does not introduce noticeable overshoot, clocks in with a greater gray average of just 5.88 milliseconds. This is several milliseconds faster than most VAs that typically sit around 8 milliseconds, and that helps reduce blur, 
smearing and ghosting. This isn't the fastest VA panel I've tested, but it's certainly one of the better ones, sitting in the response time zone that gaming grade IPS panels tend to occupy. While the refresh rate of 100Hz is nothing special given we now have 120 and 144Hz monitors at this resolution, the fast response times mean 100% of transitions occur within the refresh window so the display is never bottlenecked by response times, and this is comfortably a true 100Hz panel. Input lag is also good, not the fastest I've seen for a gaming monitor, but at around 5 milliseconds it's middle of the pack and won't slow you down significantly in your quest for gaming greatness. For NVIDIA GPU owners, you'll be happy to hear that Adaptive Sync works without any issues, provided you enable the checkbox in the NVIDIA control panel. Brightness and contrast ratio are both good at around 310 nits peak, the Kogan 34 inch ultra wide should be suitable for most users, while the contrast ratio of slightly over 3000 to 1 is bang on for a VA. I've actually seen some ultra wide VAs and other monitors using Samsung VA panels slip down to around 2000 to 1, but no such problems with this display out of the box. Color performance was better than expected out of the box. With gaming grade monitors, I don't expect factory calibration, but I always like it when a display puts up respectable figures. The white point of 6700K is closer than many similar monitors get to the correct value, and the overall CCT curve, while a little wonky, isn't too far off the mark. Gamma is slightly too low, but a Delta E average of 2.58 is good for a gaming monitor. It's not under 2.0, so it's not at the threshold for proper accuracy, but it's pretty close and that's a strong result. This continues with a look at saturation, which again you'll see here a Delta E average of 2.24. This is skewed somewhat by much better yellow and cyan performance than the other colours, and you'll spot some slight undersaturation for reds and blues through the midtones, but the fact this display has been configured with sRGB in mind is definitely welcome. Performance does fall away in our more intensive colour checker test with a delta E average of 3.26 and some particularly loose values, but really this is a typical bordering on good result for a gaming monitor in its default configuration. It's better than several other Viotech monitors I reviewed. Getting respectable performance out of the box is good because there's not a lot you can do in the on-screen menu to adjust colour performance. There are white balance and saturation controls here, but that weird CCT curve you saw earlier is hard to correct with just basic red, green and blue sliders. I messed around here a bit but was only able to get performance to be worse. Uh, that said, you can always run a full calibration and that's exactly what I did using DisplayCal. Patreon members can download the software profile I created, although as always this profile won't deliver true accuracy for other monitors due to panel variants. The results from a full calibration are good, wouldn't say it's the best I've seen, but it definitely fixes a number of issues. The contrast ratio does drop down a bit, down to around 2900 to 1, but that's not a huge concern. Panel uniformity is mediocre, which tends to be the case with ultra-wide curved VA displays. The outer edges in particular are problem areas with delta E's of above 3.0 relative to the center, while the bottom and top edges are also a bit uneven. The center area is decent, but you shouldn't expect great uniformity with this sort of display. At the end of the day, the positives outweigh the negatives with the Kogan 34-inch ultrawide. Most of the performance metrics are decent, especially response times, which are better than usual for a VA panel. We're getting a 100Hz refresh rate, which isn't a super high refresh these days, but does give a smoother experience than 60Hz by a long way, and Adaptive Sync works perfectly with both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs to enhance the gaming experience further. I really like the combination of a 21.9 aspect ratio, 3440x1440 resolution and 100Hz refresh rate as well. For ultra wides, I feel this is the sweet spot in 2019 and current pricing reflects that. Being able to get this monitor for 540 Aussie or an essentially identical Viotech display for 450 US dollars is an absolute steal. When 120 or 144Hz monitors are often double the price, you can see why I'd recommend 100Hz monitors for shoppers after the best bang for buck. Speaking of the Viotech GN34C, while I haven't specifically reviewed that monitor, I believe most of what I've tested and found with this Kogan monitor review will also apply to that model. Maybe put an asterisk on that because I'm not 100% sure, but I'd be pretty confident in recommending the Viotech options as well based on what I've seen here. This monitor isn't perfect though, the build quality and design features leave a lot to be desired and that's clearly where costs have been cut. But given the panel delivers a great gaming experience despite these problems, and it's a lot cheaper than other monitors, to me it's pretty easy to look past these minor flaws in favour of the screaming good value this display brings.
That's it for this review. If you're interested in either the Kogan or Viotech options, you can find links to those in the description below. Sorry to our viewers in Europe and Asia because I believe neither of these displays are available there, but there could be more models from the same ODM out there. So definitely do some research there. Subscribe for more monitor reviews. Consider supporting us on Patreon, and I'll catch you in the next one.